That's right, a crude awakening, and with that, we've got the executive producer and director, Mr. Basil Gelpke. Is that how I pronounce your name, sir? Correct. Good morning, and welcome Good to the morning. show. Thanks for having me. Yes, and and you've been you've you've been to Malaysia many many times already. In in fact, some of the clips of the film was shot in Malaysia, right? That's correct. And do you like it here? I wouldn't come back if I didn't like it. You know, I keep coming for the last ten years and uh, at least twice a cool year. Cool stuff. So, what are you doing in this side of the of the world now? Now we we did a film. Um, we just completed filming of a of a new documentary on, in Indonesia. Oh, cool! So I'm on the way back home in time for the European winter. Right. Okay. How nice. So you get a nice tan first before you go back, right? Absolutely. Okay. We could, we talk about your your movie, A Crude Awakening, which was um, which you did two years ago, and um, it's something a subject matter which is close to your heart, I believe, and a lot of people didn't believe that you could make this movie. And you did it, and you won six awards for it. So let's let's talk a little bit about it. What's what's it all about? It, it it's about a seemingly you know dead, dry, and and boring subject. It's about the future of of our energy supplies. Right. And this very much matters mm -hmm. to all of us. You know, you think energy is, is a given. You plug in your appliances, and electricity is there, and 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 you go to the gas station, you fill your car. The mm -hmm. Gas station always been there, but. Actually, it's not so sure um, whether the oil and the electricity will still be, you know. So what you're trying to say is a lot of people are taking taking it for granted that we will always have the supply for it. Absolutely, and 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 all research points to to a future where energy will become more and more scarce. So right. we we'll have to adjust to that new situation. Cool stuff. Well, let's talk a little, a little bit about the dependency on crude oil. I mean. Um, what, what, why is that the focus of the movie? Because oil is really the, the lifeline, you know, sort of the, the blood of the world economy. If, right. If we run of, if we run out of oil, that has huge mm -hmm. repercussions for our for our economy as, as such and for our daily lives, for our uh, for our mobility, for for everything we do. All right. And personally, I mean, why do you? Why did you decide to do? This, this particular film? I, I did find it was the most underreported and, and yet the most in, in, you know, important subject. So mm -hmm. I, Very I pressing heard it was, issue nowadays, and right? I never learned anything you know, sensitive like, like, like you, you know, so the only thing I can do is make films. So, so that was the medium I, I choose to communicate with. I mean, because you, you've had a very colorful um, professional working-wise um, uh, since, since you started out. You started out, I, I read, interviewing Liza Minnelli. And now you're doing this. That's a really huge transition. Is this what you want to focus on, on pressing issues um, economically and globally? Uh, I don't know. Things just, in retrospect, in, in a way, things just happen. So, okay. so it wasn't sort of conscious decisions to go this way or that way. But, you know, things evolve and, mm -hmm. and you involve, evolve in life. And, and, um, and, and you decide to do this or that. So, so that's... That's what happened. Right, it right. wasn't a very conscious sort of career planning. There we have some of the clips from the movie itself. You know, I mean, as, as a, a lay person, as a viewer, it seems like a... It was a very difficult movie to shoot. Although you say it's boring, I, I think yet it's very interesting as well because it presses on a very important issue. Was it very difficult to shoot this? Did you have nightmares and were you stressed out? I, I did to a certain degree, and I, I'm still very, very concerned about, you know, a, a future where we have less energy because, again, energy also means means uh, means food. Right. For for every calorie that you eat in in, in the industrialized world, mm -hmm. you need about 10 calories of of hydrocarbon input. Right. Machinery, fertilizers, mm -hmm. um, you know, transportation of food, processing of food, right. getting it to the shelves in the supermarket, all that needs energy. Yeah. So if we run out of energy, it doesn't only mean that, you know, be no more cheap flights available, but it also means, you know, that, that, that a lot of the things we, we take for granted, like, like food, like even water, mm -hmm. you know, will become, will become more expensive Scarce. and scarcer. Right, right. So the whole 
the whole, unfortunately, you know, I, I, I really believe the whole future of our civilization of, as such depends on, <clears throat> on the availability of, of, of energy. And, and if that is threatened, you know, we'll have, we'll have to readjust our lifestyle and, and, and this can be a very painful process. So is that the solution then, to, to readjust our lifestyle? Or what, what are the substitutes that we're talking about here? Substitutes to oil. Well, there's, there's short-term substitutes. You know, there's there's liquefied natural gas, and and, and um, there's obviously a lot of coal on the planet. Mm -hmm. But you, we all know what happens when when we start burning more coal. I mean, um, yep. it's not good for the climate. Absolutely. So so we're really in a very difficult situation. If we have clean, cheap abundant energy we can solve a lot of the, the world's problems we can desalinate water and we can pump it to deserts but can... unfortunately all the prices are going up now uh, absolutely <laughs> so that's the bad news but i think the price has to go up so that we learn to make better use of of energy don't take and it for granted basically. don't take it for granted and i think the only you, you only start using a commodity wisely then you feel it in, in your purse. You right, know? right. Um, I understand that when you shot this movie, you went to various different locations, including Malaysia as well. Right. But you went to crazy parts of the world, Azerbaijan, you went to Venezuela, you went to Texas. How was that? I mean, did you bring a whole, your whole entourage of your crew and you just traveled everywhere to shoot this? No, we would usually travel, the cameraman and myself, and then we would hire local oh, so people just, to, okay. who would know they're very, very around the place. And, that's how we did it. And yeah. getting permits and everything, was that, is it, was that an easy task? Uh, we tried to do it, you know, with, with as little permits as, as necessary. Right, right. Uh, really a bit style. So this is the first time we're going to be watching this in Southeast Asia on the 1st of November, um, which is in conjunction with, um, with, uh, Echo, with the um, Echo Fest, right? With the Green Echo Film Festival, Film Eco Nights. That's right. Nights as in K N I J H T S. That's right. If right. you want more information, which we will, which we will tell you in the public announcements later, but um, it's it's free entry, um, very limited seats, only 400 people. So I think it's a great movie to, to go watch. You know, it's won many awards and it's on a very pressing issue. But let's talk about where Malaysia is concerned now. Where do you think we're heading, where oil and gas is concerned? Oh, Malaysia has been, you know, wonderfully positioned. Malaysia had, still has oil and gas and has palm oil and, um, and a lot of sun. Mm -hmm. um, that helps as well. But, but the Malaysians should be aware that Malaysia will become a net oil importer in the year 2010 and that'll change a lot of, right. of the equation in, in Malaysia. That, that means there's, you know, uh, Malaysia is not going to earn money by, by, by selling oil, but mm. it's going to spend money by buying oil and, and, and that's a major shift. So do you think important people should come and watch this movie? Important oil and gas people in Malaysia, if they don't know already about what's happening? <laughs> When we started making that movie about four years ago, lots of people in the industry, you know, denied the fact that there's such a thing as peak oil. Peak oil meaning that, That's right. you know, finite resources once reaches the peak of production, mm -hmm. and then the production, you know, inevitably goes down. Goes down. But the notion has changed, and I think I think by now a lot of people in the industry are aware of this, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the oil people, you know, are are. are Looking into alternative energies solutions. And, and, and other solutions. Does this to film the offer solutions in a way? No, I'm a filmmaker. Listen, <laughs> if I had solutions, I wouldn't be sitting here. Well, um, you never know. You might be in a panel of some, you know, very big oil and gas thing after this. Since right. you know so much about it. No, I think if I had solutions, they would maybe keep me in confinement somewhere. <laughs> Okay, well, unfortunately, we're running out of time, but thank you so much for coming thank on the show. Thank you very much for having uh, For me. those of you out there who are very interested in The Crude Awakening, it premieres in Southeast Asia, November 1st, 2008, 3.30 p.m. at the National Arts Academy or the Academy uh, Sani Kebangsaan. And for more information, you can log on to www.ecoknights, that's K-N-I-G-H-T-S dot com. Um, and we will give you the phone number slightly later on. The seats are limited. I'm looking forward to watching this, but thank you so much for coming down here. Thank you very much. And uh, looking forward to your next project.
Okay, good morning. We're going to go for a short break now. We'll come back more interesting guests. So stay tuned with us on Breakfast Show, the show worth waking up for.